Just got done dropping the kids off on the school bus and uh, we're gonna get ready to start our first day back detailing. It's 19 degrees outside and thank Jesus I don't have to wash a vehicle in this cold because it just wouldn't pan out. There's just certain things you can and cannot do as a detailer and washing a vehicle in freezing temperatures, <laughs> it doesn't work. But uh, whew. let's go ahead and get inside the garage and see what we're working on today. This is my friend's new to them Jeep Wrangler. This is their dream vehicle. I'm really excited to be able to detail it for them. They reached out to me and uh, wanted to have the interior done. It's nothing major and the exterior to be coated. Get all of this gear off and we'll get set up and uh, start going through this vehicle together. Jeep Wranglers have a very unique style. They almost have a cult-like following for those that are fans of Jeep Wranglers. In fact, they have like a secret handshake when they drive by one another, so I've heard. But they have a lot of different pieces on them, tight angles, trim pieces that can be prone to fading. We're fortunate that this vehicle doesn't have the typical trim pieces on the fender flares. These are painted, so we'll have to deal with that. The soft top does need a little bit of TLC, and for those of you that might be interested in some tips on how to clean and restore a soft top, I'll put the link for that video down below. It's a recent video that I just did. But when it comes to polishing all of these tight areas, there are special polishers or tools that might be required to safely and effectively get the results you're looking for. So let's jump into polishing this vehicle. So this is the side that I have not polished yet. You can see around the reflection of our light. We've got a lot of these lines, swirls, and scratches on the paint. It's kind of got a duller finish to it. When we come over here, you can see we've got just better clarity, better reflection. We don't see all those lines uh, of the swirls and scratches kind of around the reflection of our light. It's not 100%. There are some deep rids throughout this Jeep. I believe it's been used hard in the few years that it's been in existence, but here's kind of our 50-50 right here where you can see what a polished side versus unpolished side. I'm really happy with those results, especially for white. White is extremely forgiving. I know some people will probably say for white, you know, just do a quick polish, but because of how hard this paint is, I actually tried out probably four or five different combos on the hood, starting with the least aggressive and working my way forward and was actually using a purple wool a polishing pad from Lake Country along with Angel Wax Resurrection and still wasn't getting uh, what I wanted. It was actually too aggressive and I had to uh, finish down with a polish. And I was like, you know, I don't want to have to do a two-step on this vehicle. Um, and finding the Detail Addicts Platinum Polish, I was able to cut and correct and finish down really nicely. So I am happy with this uh, end combination here. I think the customer is going to be too. So we're going to move forward with the rest of the vehicle. Now, Jeep Wranglers are not my favorite to detail because you can see we've got all of these different panels, a lot of angles. We've got the door hinges here that are just kind of clunky and precarious. We've got a lot of trim pieces in weird places. You can see even here under our windshield wipers, got like a one inch piece here. You've got weird angles here where the wipers kind of come in contact, tight places where your pad doesn't want to really come in handy. Even here under the hood, it's kind of hard to polish in these areas. Again, trim pieces here that sometimes you have to be very careful when you're polishing because one, it's a lot of nooks and crannies you got to get under and two, a lot of places that your backing plate or your pad could come into to contact with tighter places and do some damage. So having a nano polisher is going to really come in handy, especially for these tighter pieces here along the hood. You don't want to have a five inch backing plate, especially since I've done so much work to get this fabric top cleaned. I don't want to have my pad possibly go over on this area and have residue. So we're going to have to use a nano polisher. You can open the door and polish it this way. So that way you kind of avoid getting on these trim pieces here. But these pieces right here, if you use a five inch packing plate, you're going to end up coming up on your fabric top. And if you put tape here, one, you might have residue and two, you're, it's still a little bit big and bulky. So we are going to use a nano polisher. 
places like here, I'm just going to end up polishing kind of with my finger and a microfiber again here because you're going to have to almost, like it's almost near impossible to get in some of these places. So you have to have realistic expectations. But even when you're polishing back in these areas right here, it's very hard to get polishers. Now, normally there is a huge tire right here. The customer removed it for me to make things a little bit easier but you're still gonna be very limited with access points. When it comes to Jeep Wranglers, I'll share with you guys some polishers that might come in handy getting in these tight spaces. So the SPTA polisher I've had for a while now, it is a battery operated DA polisher. It's not the most powerful. I find that it can stall, but if you're looking for kind of a two inch or even a one inch polisher it comes with uh different backing plates it even has a three inch backing plate you can see here it's not the most ergonomic you kind of have this kind of snap on and off you have your speed adjusters here i find if you kind of power up to speed five or six it can kind of push through some of the stalling issues that it has but you don't want to use a very heavy hand um, sometimes I'm used to kind of holding things up here and you can't really do that because you're going to come in contact with the backing plate or the motor casing here. So, um, not a hundred percent my favorite, but for the price point, it gets the job done, especially when you are comparing it to the $300, $400, uh, hybrid nano polishers from Rupes. Um, this is a lot, lot more affordable. I'll put the price and kind of the specs on the screen for you guys to see. It comes with two batteries that you can take out here and they are rechargeable. So it is convenient. The price, if you're looking for something to kind of get in those tighter spaces, it will get the job done. Now, I recently just picked this up over the holiday season uh, from Black Friday. I'm really, really excited about this one. This is actually the G13 polisher from Grios. Now this thing, is a long throw polisher that comes with a three inch backing plate. It also has a two inch backing plate that you can alternate with it right here. Uh, it doesn't necessarily, I, I would, I'm not quite sure if you can put a kind of telescoping piece on it um, that would make it be able to kind of be a long reach. But the fact that we have the power of a long throw polisher, it's essentially the same type of power that you're going to experience from their G15 now in a smaller throw. And I, what I like about Grios is that they have their plugs here that if I have a 25 foot cord, I can take this and essentially snap this right into my polisher. So now I don't have as many cords laying around that are going to trip me up or trip my, um, my seat over and it just feels solid. It feels well built. Holy mother of pearl, the power. That's speed six. We've got our cooling vents here. We've got our lock mechanism here. Everything is just nicely suited. I'm really, really excited to try this out, especially if we've got places like here that I want to be able to polish and I don't want to worry about hitting some of the tighter pieces. If you have headlights, this is going to be fantastic to be able to do headlight correction. Woo! That is zippy. So I'm excited to test this out. Uh, this is a step up from the G8. They have their G8, which is kind of similar to the G9 as far as motor. Um, and I've heard some mixed reviews on the G8 as far as power and stalling. I think this solves all of those problems, but the fact that this is a long throw, you've got kind of a bigger throw than your standard three inch. And the power on this thing is just outstanding. So I am excited to try this out. I think this is going to be exactly what I need for some of these tighter areas. So we're going to get moving. So typically when I polish, I start from the top and I work my way down. We're going to get some of these more precarious, smaller portions done with the mini polisher. It did a fantastic job of getting in those one inch, two inch spots that normally I would struggle with. You can see on the back fender, 
I was able to use the three inch polisher from Griot's. It did a fantastic job of getting into those areas nice and tight. You want to be very careful with your backing plate and your pad that you don't make contact with the painted surfaces if you do have painted trim. You can see if I were to use my 5 inch backing plate it would be a little awkward. I wouldn't make good contact with all of the surface area so that 3 inch pad on the Griot's polisher was fantastic. Here on our front, the 5 inch backing plate is perfectly fine to be able to use in these sections. Again, just be very careful with your backing plate on those tight areas. That way you don't come in contact and possibly burn the paint. Now on this back trunk, we're going to open it up so I can have a little bit of easier access to the bottom portion. But the SPTA Mini Polisher did a fantastic job of giving me access to a lot of those really awkward, hard to reach spaces that otherwise I would have just had to polish by hand. All right, so we're about two hours into polishing the Jeep Wrangler. Finally nailed down the polish and the pad combo that was giving me the level of correction and finishing down the way I want. Last cut, compounding glaze, and the yellow Rupes foam pads. They're kind of my go-to when I want to do a one-step. They have decent correction when you pair it with the right polish, and the last cut has fantastic cutting ability, but finishes down really well because it's a compounding glaze, but it has no fillers within it. The nano polisher, the SPTA nano polisher, definitely came in clutch on that back trunk area, so I was able to breeze through that, get a lot better correction than me just doing it by hand. So for those of you that are wondering if the SPTA polisher is worth it. If you ever plan on working on Jeep Wranglers, definitely worth it. I really am glad that I had that polisher. The back trunk, it's not 100% correction, but it's a lot better. I'll show you a quick glance of what I was able to do versus an unpolished part. And you can see it turned out really well. So we're gonna keep moving. Hopefully we'll be able to kind of breeze through this, do our panel wipe, get the top with our 303 fabric coat, just so that way we have that done. And then we will move on to the coating. This has been a long day. It is 12.15. Might stop for lunch soon, finish this up. And then hopefully by around 2, 2.30, we'll be able to coat it and get it home to the customer. So keep going. Hopefully these tips can come in handy for those of you that may have to polish a Jeep Wrangler. You can see we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but we're going to finish this up in about four hours total, do our panel prep, and get it ready for our ceramic coating. Stay tuned for that video coming up shortly, but thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.